So thanks for coming to World IA Day, everybody. Um, I'll be kicking off this afternoon's Lightning Talk series with designing content for an untrusting world. Largely, your average content consumer, regardless of what form they take, whether they're a shopper or a reader, are overwhelmed with the amount of content that they have available to them. And with recent phenomenon like fake news, they're increasingly wary of what content they choose to consume. And there's a little bit of fear there. Am I going to take something in and believe it as true only for it to be determined false later? So this lightning talk is going to look at how our own truths are formed, how we evaluate information when it's compared to those truths, and then some techniques for designing content to hopefully combat some of that wariness on behalf of your consumer. Oh, I've got a spinny rainbow wheel on my end. Okay, there we go. So, but before we begin, let me introduce myself really briefly. I'm Clara Fritz. I'm a senior analyst at Enterprise Knowledge, which is a professional services firm down in Arlington. We do all kinds of knowledge management and strategy, data and information management, engineering, as well as technical solutions. Personally, I've got a background in graphic design, which marries quite nicely with a lot of search strategy and design and content strategy and design work I do. I'm wireframing almost every day, and when I'm lucky, I get to facilitate some design thinking <coughs> sessions with our clients. And since we have such a short amount of time to spend together, I also want to briefly give you an overview of how we're going to make our path forward through these next few minutes together. So first, I'm going to look at what makes us not trust information. What are we, how are we evaluating information to determine its trustworthiness? And then we're going to take a step back and look at how our own truths are formed in terms of how do we create something to evaluate information against. And then we're going to look at what erodes truth in the first place, which is a great segue into what I like to call the inconsistency problem, which is really running rampant these days. And then at the end, wrapping up with some techniques you guys can implement on your own when you're facing the unruly content design process. And the goal is hopefully every one of you will leave this lightning talk with the knowledge to build trustworthy content. So jumping right in, when we're presented with information, subconsciously, we immediately evaluate it against what we know to be true. And a way I like to explain this is think of that toy that toddlers play with, where you've got a cube shaped block and you're trying to fit it into a square shaped hole. The same process happens when we're presented with information. We evaluate it, see if it fits, and if it does, great. But when these don't align, this is when we're forced to evaluate not only the information we're presented with, but also the facts that we know to be true. And so thinking of that block, that's what we are trying to create, essentially. How are these truths formed? How do we decide what we can guide or trust information against. So let's take the example that the sky is blue. This is something that a majority of the people in this room can agree that when you walk outside for a large part of the year, you look up and the sky is some semblance of a shade of blue. So every day incrementally, this truth is something that's formed within you from your own experience. But it's also confirmed when you look at paintings. So we know that at least artists have also seen the sky as blue for a very long time. We see that it's blue in photographs. And this truth then goes on to take forms in other medias, like <coughs> video games. Regardless of what genre they are, the sky is blue. And what's really cool about this fact, because while it's technically sourced in the visual realm, we can also experience it in other forms, like literature. Uh, author Haruki Murakami is quoted as saying, the sky grew darker, painted blue on blue, one stroke at a time into deeper and deeper shades of night. So the sky is blue, it's a fact a majority of people can agree upon, and consistently throughout your life, it's been confirmed to you that this is a truth. So let's look at how this could happen in the professional realm. For us and a lot of people in this room, the employee handbook at your place of work is something that you access all the time. For us, it's filed away on our internet under employee resources. The successful user path used to find the employee handbook and every time that path successfully leads to them finding that handbook, that becomes a truth. The employee handbook is on the internet under employee resources. This is also true for when I'm having a down day at work and want to see cute pictures, 
of my dog, I know exactly where to go to find that information. And this is why folder structures are so popular. They're a personalized means of information architecture designed according to that person's own truths. So where does inconsistency come into play with all of this? Before we answer that, I'm going to pose a question to all of you. Why do mosquito bites itch? You can cue some imaginary Jeopardy music if that helps you jog a few ideas. Does anybody know? What was that? Yeah, something the mosquito Mhm. Yeah, so that's part of it. We'll do a little mosquito countdown. Uh huh. Because it's <laughs> That I think so. So, unfortunately, while preparing this presentation, you're all wrong. I've learned that mosquito bites itch because when they bite you, your blood mixes with the blood of their previous victims, and when it happens to be a sheep, your blood becomes woolly, and that makes them itchy. <laughs> And so this is an inconsistency, but it's in the realm of the humorous because it's so far out of the realm. So again, imagine that toy. It's not even a shape that you can fit your truth into. It doesn't even belong on there. So for us, it's a funny inconsistency, and we can quickly acknowledge that that inconsistency, it's, it's a funny truth, if you would. But when it comes to current events, inconsistencies move away from the humorous and can quickly become genuinely confusing. So let's look at a few samples here. Police officer charged in the shooting death of an unarmed neighbor. Dallas police officer Amber Geiger says she entered Botham Sham Jen's apartment by mistake at the end of her shift. Casey Siegel reports. Okay, that's the story. And then we have this interpretation. Dallas police officer charged with manslaughter and fatal shooting of unarmed man in his own apartment. A Dallas police officer was arrested Sunday in connection with the shooting death of Botham Sham Jen, the Texas Ranger said. Amber Geiger, who was white, was off duty when she shot Jean, a black man, after mistakenly entering his apartment at the complex where she also lived, police said Thursday. So we've got two stories here. Are they both true? Are parts of these stories true? Which one do you choose to believe and why? Regardless of which one, you think is most true or most aligns to the truth is probably informed by your own belief system or your own set of truths, which is fine. But again, we introduce this idea that this can be genuinely confusing for certain people, and news outlets are well aware that you know their average consumer, they're looking for information that aligns with what they believe in. At the end of the day, it's a question of you know marketing, essentially. So. If you can't avoid inconsistency, how can you address it? So ideally, you want to avoid this kind of thing. You want to avoid that total confusion of, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what's true. I don't know where to go from here. And we've learned that the best way to counteract this is with early, descriptive, and hyper clear communication. Let's think back to the example that everyone knows where the employee handbook is located. It's filed under employee resources on the internet. One day, it's not there anymore. You're wrongfully going about your way telling people how to find the employee handbook. They can locate it, and now it's not a truth. I, being the paranoid kind of person that I am, would think things like, oh, they must be changing my PTO policy, or am I not going to be able to work from home anymore? Thinking, what are all the wrong things that could go with this? However, if we had someone like Helen from HR that reached out and said, hey, the employee handbook is no longer filed under employee resources because you guys access it all the time. You can now find it on the home page. It should save you all some time. But if you have questions, reach out to me. Helen does a great job here because she's addressing the fact that there is an inconsistency in the content or information architecture people are relying on and tells them why. So how do we begin co designing content for truth? In the event that you can, you have to address it, the inconsistency has to be made, uh, but you're able to actually avoid the inconsistency, you can begin with the styling of that content. And I'm about to introduce a maxim which can be held true throughout your content design process to ensure that truthness of it. 
that the content creator should value familiarity and consistency over novelty. So we're looking at styling for an example. The New York Times breaking news alerts haven't changed in at least seven years, which is when I last subscribed. This is something that you get in your email on a regular basis, and anytime there's a, whatever they deem a breaking news alert, you get something like this. And we've run some really interesting sessions with our clients when they're un, you know, confused about what a content type is or how it can help their users at the end of the day. We've taken something like this, and we've <coughs> hidden all of the words. We'll keep the red brick at the top, kept the, you know, the heavy black block in the, also at the top, and then this kind of grayer block at the bottom as well as the universally recognized hyperlink blue at the bottom. And almost always, regardless of tenure or familiarity with web content, everyone can say the red is probably some kind of alert or it's telling me what I'm looking at. The darker black piece is maybe the one thing I need to know. Everything that's grayer at the bottom where the lines of text would be, that's extra information if I want it, and then if I want it even more, the hyperlink is going to convey some of that to me. And so when it comes to writing, again, as I mentioned, familiarity and consistency over novelty. And I think in this current space and time of everyone being on this path to con uh, constant self-improvement, almost everything can really be seen as an instructional manual. And I'm personally trying to get better at cooking, so I spend lots of time on sites like Bon Appetit, which has its series of brands underneath it. One of the ones I really like is Healthyish. And one thing I realized is that regardless of what kind of recipe you're looking on under the Healthyish brand, you're getting recipe preparation steps that look like this. Narrative style, but it's also giving a lot of power to that person. You're the person that's placing a rack in the middle of the oven you are heating oil in a medium saucepan. You are the one that's blending vinegar, tahini, and garlic together. It's giving the someone that's in the kitchen a lot of confidence in their abilities, and also saying like, yes, like you can do this. And what's really interesting is this, you spend time on Bon Appetit's website looking at their different brands. All of their preparations, even though they're all doing the same thing, are all styled and written differently with a different voice. Those that are looking for more classical recipes, maybe they're catering to an older audience, they're very traditional in their preparation layout, and the voice and language changes. So if anything, you know, look for opportunities to implement consistency, whether it's in the styling or the writing, and some ways you can do this are begin standardizing styles across a content type. Maybe all your newsletters look the same, so that visually, without even the content in there, people can tell at the glance that this is a newsletter. Also consider your voice. Is there a oneness that's consistent across each iteration of that kind of content? And lastly, if you have to con you know, commit some kind of inconsistency, make sure that you communicate those changes clearly early and give them a why. And if you, you know, hopefully take away anything from this conversation, it's don't abandon the content consumer because they're there and you're there to provide them with the information that they're looking for. And we can always design things better to suit whatever they're looking at for. But otherwise, that's it. Thank you.